so I, I wanted to, uh, I, I might, I'm going to be very short today because I have been accused unjustly, I'm sure, of, of uh, hogging all the preaching time. And I do, uh, I do, uh, I love, I love the spirit of what's happening in this season. And there is an expectation but um, I just wanted to want to thank Ziggy again. You know, I had this opportunity to have this ex supernatural exchange with my friend in California, and I'm meditating uh, in my little chair. Now, listen, my idea of meditating right now, uh, I, I am a beginner meditator. And so meditating for me is I just sit down and be still. I just sit down. I be still, I breathe, I watch my breathing, and I try my best whenever, because I have a very active mind. I'm, I have a very busy mind, and I'm figuring stuff out, and I'm solving problems, and I have lived much of my life in the right-wrong lane. If I'm right, you're wrong. If you don't believe what I believe is right. So anyway, you can see that that could probably cause an overactive mind. Um, but uh, as, as I have enjoyed this new season of practicing being still, practicing breathing, just breathing, just breathing, I'm all for breathing. And um, Dr. Dr. Baba, my TMJ doctor, he says that breathing is the most important thing. That's right. So I have come to appreciate that. Anyway, I never thought of it that way, but breathing is very important. So I'm doing that one day, and I, I get a call from my friend, in, and, and she says, uh, Deanne, God says that yellow is beautiful. And um, that was kind of an amazing statement because right before um, she called, in, uh, sometimes when I meditate and I close my eyes and I'm just being still, going in, being still, shutting down the chatter. <laughs> what happens is, is that in my mind's eye, I, I'll see a color. And sometimes it's uh, <clears throat> blue, sometimes it's black. And every once in a while, it'll be yellow or about, or about this color, kind of a goldy yellow, mustardy goldy yellow. Anyway, so... Um, so I heard, in my mind, yellow. And I'm thinking, well, hooray, maybe I'm going to get to see yellow. And in the meantime, Linda calls me and says, I, I just got something to tell you. And that God says that yellow is beautiful. And I thought, well, how extraordinary for halfway across the United States of America, for God to speak someone, the word yellow is beautiful when I, he had just spoken it to me. So I thought maybe yellow is important. So I, I'm going to, as I, <coughs> as I join with you periodically, we're going to return to yellow because yellow has the highest <coughs> reflective quality of any color uh, in the color spectrum. It's not white that reflects the most, it's yellow. Isn't that interesting? And yellow is a very important biblical color. And because it represents the glory of God, it represents the Shekinah glory, it represents the light in the tabernacle. And you know, the word of God says that Jesus is the light of the world. And he came in as the light, and the darkness could not comprehend it. That doesn't mean that the darkness couldn't understand it. It means that the darkness could not overcome it. That's what that word comprehend means. It means that darkness cannot comprehend light. And so as I'm here with you today, I am celebrating how God can communicate what his purpose in, in it is in a season. And I believe it is that we would walk in the light and the life of God, and it's represented by the color yellow. So I'm, I'm just finding reasons to yank out the yellow or the gold because in the word of God, they are interchangeable. Now, I, wanna, I want to say this, and then I have a short testimony. 
Yellow and gold are also the color of fire. Isn't it interesting that red is not the color of fire? Yellow and gold is the color of fire. And the word of God says that fire represents the presence of God. And in, and, uh, in Deuteronomy 4.24 and in Hebrews 12.29 and God's refining process. You don't come to joy by simply a decision. It is a refining process that the grace of God works in you that you can receive that joy. And those <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 4.24 and Hebrews 12.29 it says that our God is a consuming fire. Hey. Now, when you look up the word uh, consume, it means uh, to devour. Our God's fire devours all the works of darkness. Our God is a consuming fire. He consumes us. That is what the glory of God looks like. It looks like us being consumed by the fire of God. And as I wear this color today, I want to tell you about my week. My week was not consumed with the fire of God. All right. I so enjoyed and was so uplifted by the testimonies that I was hearing about the joy of the Lord uh, but I was not actively uh, experiencing the joy of the Lord. But I was, I was, con I was, um, I was contesting for it All in right. the realm of the spirit. All right. And I said to myself in my chair, I said, I want this joy. I know this joy is mine, but I don't know how to get it. And, uh, and as I, and you know, I think it's really good uh, for me and people like me to be really honest with God because you cannot think one thing and think that God does not know what you're thinking and then say something out loud in your prayer chair and he doesn't get it. Yeah, well, our thoughts are not hidden yeah. from God. So I just uh, want to say that uh, this process of coming into this happiness is, has been for me a relinquishing of, of uh, something that I didn't know I, I was unwilling to relinquish. That's good, dear one. Right. We've had some real challenges. I mean real challenges lately. And um, I was uh, holding on to some serious judgments some serious uh, unforgiveness. And I didn't, I didn't know the depth of it. But I, I want to tell you, when we understand that this is a month of trust and rest, I came one night many years ago to a point where once again I was desperate. Isn't that, I want to tell you, we need to thank God for desperation. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. anyway, so in the night, a light shone up in the corner of my bedroom and I heard this uh, come out from the light. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't lean to your right and wrong. I was right, they were wrong. Do not lean to your ego that says they have no idea what I sacrificed. Hello, hello. And it, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. What are we acknowledging? We are acknowledging all of the attributes of God. We're acknowledging that we are forgiven. We are acknowledging that his goodness led us to that repentance and that we are under the same bond of that love to extend it to other people. Even the people that we don't know that we've held a little bit. Do you know that you can say, I forgive and not mean it? Sort of like my precious Aunt Colleen, she used to say when she was just furious with somebody, she would say, well, I just gave them to the Lord. Well, <laughs> Colleen, you are my best. 
Yeah. Anyway, now she's across on the other side. But I want to tell you what, that is, that is the wrong attitude when you're giving them to the Lord. <laughs> so I want to say that I did not know that that's what God was after. I did not know. I cried. I felt very bad. I felt very condemned. Cancel clear, cancel clear. I love you. Thank you. Please forgive me. I, I can't tell you how many times. I was consumed with it. But I did not know that what was required for me to receive this awesome energy of the glory of God, the fire of God, yes. the joy, the happiness of God, was that I would give up something that I had a right to. I had to give it up. And I had to give it up with the same recognition that I myself have been forgiven for. Oh. I'm so glad that you guys don't know all the bad things I did. Because you probably would not want to listen to me ever. <laughs> but he has forgiven me. Yes. And his goodness reached deep in my soul, um, actually, this, this morning at 8 o'clock. And I, I said it, and I meant it with all of my heart. And then, lo and behold, something came to me this morning, right after I did that, that almost ripped it back out. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> we, are, we are contending for the right. work of God in our, in our lives. Please don't let me go. And you know, Steph, you know how we don't like to be left out of anything. And so uh, unforgiveness and judgment and pride, pride for who we, who we become in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. But it's not because of any works that we have done. It is by his great grace. So I'm just saying to you that this happiness is an extension of grace. And if you're not flowing in it just all that you want to, just uh, go deep in, take a deep breath. And because it's really to just relax in that and, and release it. Release it. Release it. So if there's somebody that you're having a problem with right now, and you're just saying, well, I'm just giving it to God. <laughs> giving them to God. Uh, I, I want you to take a deep breath and realize that God did not say that to you or I. The goodness of God leads all to repentance. So if we're going to carry the fire of revival, if we're going to be filled and consumed with the fire of God, the light of God, then there's a, probably, there could be a little cleanup work that he is doing, but it's so good. So welcome to the goodness of God, to the house that proclaims the goodness of God, the redemptive, complete redemptive work of God, and um, enter in. Amen.